Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to the new subscribers. Thank you for stopping in and joining us here. Okay. So, got the little Suzuki 9.9 .9 at least up and running. It shifts, it pees, and uh, it's a run. I still got a lot of cosmetics to do and some good old elbow grease cleaning on that little guy but uh we'll get to that we'll get we'll get to that you understand but before i bring let me try that again before i bring the next victim in here i'm gonna do a little bit of a uh inspectionist video I had some folks bring one in here to me. And I don't know, but something tells me it's bad. Something tells me it's bad. So we're going to look at this thing. And the engine in questionis, you understand us, I speak it Spanish is a 55 commercial another one just like the other one except with this one well i'm gonna show you so we'll go out there and take a look at it something just don't seem quite right so that's what we're gonna do you understand and uh whoa 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 what's what's that is that an earthquake Well, we just had a pretty good earthquake here. Um, it's over on the peninsula, which is 50, 50 miles away from here on Kodiak. Um, they're saying, I think it was an 8.2. Um, so that's what all the sirens are about. This is not an advisory. This is not a drill. Please evacuate now. If you felt that earthquake, it was a long roller earthquake. Those long roller earthquakes are a good indication that there will be a tsunami occurring. Um, and that's exactly what happened. That was a magnitude 8.1 earthquake. It was about 60 miles southeast of Chignik. I don't have information on the depth on that right now. It's somewhere on my phone, but... Um, and there was a tsunami warning generated by the National Weather Service that is still in effect for Kodiak. If you are in the villages, please evacuate now and get to higher ground. If you are here in Kodiak, also evacuate and get to higher ground. If
Okay, so here she is. And this is how I received it for the most parts. Um, throttle's pretty sticky. Not, no, not that bad. It'll go a little bit in reverse, but I can't line up the flywheel and whatnot to get it in the forward. And you say, well, you say, why? And I'll show you. This is an E55. And then it's got that weird commercial number, LSW. So, I don't know if it's a 90 or what it is. But anyway, you see him. Here is the failure of this motor to communicate. You see that? <clears throat> now. It won't move at all. Then when you look around here, look at, look at it later. Now, like I said, this is how I received. See there? See there? That head's been off. So we're going to pop that head off and take a look and see. So let me get my little zipper gun, some wrenches, whatnot. And let's get that off and take a peek. What size are those? Could it be? Could it be? It could. I dropped my socket. Bye, Joe. Wow, white powdery substance. I don't even know if I could get that bottom spark plug out of there. But yeah, I mean, she should start right up and run, right? Look at those pistons. Look at those cylinders. Solid rust. Solid rust. Boy. And you see that? It's solid rust. And these people really, they wanted to know, you know, could you, yeah, can you do a quick repair on that and get that running for us? Sure, if I rebuild it. Uh, and like I said, this is how I got the motor. Uh. So, boy, there's some good parts on it, though. But uh, that cylinder would need to be taken off, or excuse me, that power head would need to be taken off. And, uh, actually put on a honing machine and go a thousandths or more over I'm sure um, so I will call them and let them know um, could I repair this could I you know hone this myself and all that I, I think so uh, one reason is these these commercial 55s are just 
just that tough. I mean, but this one, he told me it was overheated, severely badly overheated. And then it was kind of thrown up. Uh, I think he said his cousin tried to work on it and didn't get anywhere, so they thought they'd bring it to me and see if there's hope. Well, depending on what they want to spend, there's certainly hope because everything other than the cylinders uh, is most likely fine. But when he says it got really hot, that definition can be quite vague, you'll understand. Um, who knows what the pistons, the skirting on the pistons and, and so forth. Uh, the... the, the the, the top surface of the piston don't look bad, but uh, there's no pitting or nothing I see on that. So th this thing's probably buildable, but that's what it would take. And then given the overall condition of everything else, as salty and dirty as it is, not cost effective um, for me to do it for somebody else. Certainly cost effective for them to do it on their own. I mean, these are one of the, in my opinions, one of the toughest outboards OMC had had going but this one needs more than it's economically worth to repair it for and that's the other thing <laughs> the head gasket's gone so it's just not repairable and I will call the owner and let him know that so that was a fairly quick inspection, wasn't it? So I got to make some phone calls on that one. I'll be back. Well, we all know what it means when I wear the hat. It means somebody came bearing the gifts. So it is Christmas in August. What do you say? We go over there and look at it. It's a cutie. It's a little bitty cutie. Want to see it? Let's go look. There she is. It's a cutie. It's a little cutie. Look at that. That is a Made in Belgium, little cutie. This little cutie is a 1990. And uh, there is a little bit of an issue with it. And I will show you what that issue is. If you look right there at the throat of the carburetor, you can see all this rust colored water. <laughs> what does that mean? What does it mean? It means... It means that. It means it's seized up. Now, it's probably weather seized up. Um, looking up under the cowling, the upper cowling there, it's full of spruce needles and yuck and rust and stuff under there. So this is one I will be pulling the head off of and doing an inspection as well to see what this cylinders look like. So let me get some tools. I'll be back.
<laughs> it's okay. Ooh. <laughs> I'm <sighs> Well, when I took the head off, I see my neighbor's dog, Olive. Olive! What you doing there? What she do? over here looking for treats I don't know that you're gonna be able to see it too good but um, when I took it the head off I don't know is this thing tilt oh there you go boy they're up high enough and it's mostly just fresh water stuff see all this spruce and spider webs there's creepy crawlies in there just just abused Spider webs, everything. So, this little head gasket. Boy, what a mess. It does, being that it's Belgium, it has the forward and neutral. There's forward and there's neutral. But, boy, I think those will hone up actually. With just with just a ball hone right right in here, so I'm gonna spray a little stuff in there and get them soaking, and once I let them soak for a little bit, I'll take this off and see if I can get them a, a breaker on there and get it working. See what happens. So I'll be back. You can see where I had to take the torch and heat these bolts that held the cover on, the recoil and all. And you can see all the cobwebs, spruce. Um, very typical of this guy that, that has these motors. I'll, I'll explain a little more. but. Uh, this one I was able to get it to go over. There's some discoloration on the cylinder walls, but I don't see any real heavy pitting or anything. So a light hone on this, and it might go. Um, this motor, you can see all the rusty water that came out of the throat of the carburetor. So we'll open that carburetor, but I, you know, I know what it's gonna look like. Um, and like I said, this guy here, um, I've traded him and sold him four or five small outboards like this over the last 10 years or so. And every one he brings back are just like that. In fact, I sold him this motor three or four years ago. Um, it left here, it, it was mint, it was pristine. And here it comes, just like several of the others that 
he gets his hands on, this is what every one of them looks like when he brings them back. They're just destroyed. He throws them out. He lives in a bunch of spruce trees and everything in an old house that's all, that looks about like this motor. Um, and uh, what he does with them, I don't know. But he always, when he gets done using them, he just throws them on the ground up under spruce trees. And this is how they always look um, when they come back. Really sad. Really, really sad. But I'm going to pop this carb real quick. And it'll look. About like the rest of this here Mota. It'll be for the most part ruined. Um, yeah. Pretty sad. And he'll come in here and he'll, you know, you got I just need a, like a little two or three horse and blah blah. And I'm like, what? You're gonna use it once or twice and you just throw it on the ground out there and ruin it. No, no, I'm gonna take care of this one. I got, I got a, a, I built a little lean too. Yeah. Well, it looks like it did more leaning than tooing. So, um, yeah, it's for the most part ruined. So let me get the carburetor or apron off, and I'll be right back. Okay. So this is what came out from under the the intake area. Let's look. The carburetor is full of yuck. Um, boogers. And there's what I got inside, you can see the hinge. Everything is just full of good old yuck. But what I found even more interesting uh, I went ahead and popped the uh, intake get you down in here yeah. so I popped those bolts out of the intake real quick yummy yeah yummy Can you see inside there? Yeah. That's how you treat your little outboard. Just like that. Yeah. So. There you go. Uh, yeah. So sad. So sad. Yeah, pretty sad. I can save this cob a rape. It's bad, but it'll clean up. You can see in the throat there too. Yummy. Yeah, he set it facing up toward the sky out there up under the spruce trees. And she just sat there and filled each new rain cycle just filled full of water. So I believe I have another power head that's in good shape that I can put on this leg. I do like this leg because it has the uh, neutral reverse. Um, I like that. 
just makes it a lot easier to start it when you can put it in neutral. So I'll clean this carburetor up, get it in my ultrasonic cleaner, save that. I'll take the power head off and see what I got for another one down there. I know I got one. But it is so sad. So sad. Okay, in addition to my outboards, I've been paying bills. That's a rototiller. I already took care of that. I got rid of the Honda Power Pack. I got a Husqvarna mower with a Honda engine on it. And up under there, I've got a intrinsic fuel pump that I got to take care of. But... Gotta do what you gotta do. Well. <sighs> Everybody remembers Fret, right? Fret. He's the one-eyed, pissed-off porch weather frog. But old Fred also has a, a, a decree. He's, a, he's a, a counseling frog. Whenever I get to feeling, you know, you know, a little, let's say, out of timing. I sit and I talk with Fred. And uh, I was telling him, you know, I, I, I just been getting depressed lately. I, I see, you remember that Evan Rude 30 I showed you a little? video or two ago been dunked in the ocean just scooping the old rust and goo from Davy Jones out of the cylinders then this 55 commercial cylinders full of yuck all rusted and pitted So I had to come talk to Fred and get some counseling. It's enough to make you cry. Then I told Fred, I said, this cute little three horse Johnson about took me over the edge. These outboard killers. That was a nice little outboard. Little cutie. Made in Belgium. So, Fred said, sooner or later, you'll have a good one roll in here. You just gotta be patient. Just gotta look around, sniff around. You'll have a good one come in here. But then I had to remind him. We had an earthquake. People killing outboards left and right, bringing them in here, these outboard killers. Then the earth, the whole world shaking under my feet. I told Fred, it's more than I can take. But he had some encouraging words. He reminded me of my little 1949 Johnson that a fella brought me. Who said that he saw my videos on, on the YouTube. And he brought me that pretty little Johnson. He said, you gotta remember the good sometimes. You can't just dwell on the outboard killers. So I thought about that. And I, that's a good point. Even from him. That's a good point. So, ah, the earthquake, it shook things around a little bit. Maybe a couple little things fell off the wall. Sometimes it's good to be, you know, shake things up a little bit. That's what he told me. He told me about the 49 Johnson. I said, you know, for a one eyed pissed off porch weather frog with a decree. Old Fred can make some sense sometimes. 
just got to focus on the good sometimes, you know what I mean? Nobody got hurt on that earthquake. No tsunami. So, that's going to be a wrap. And as always, that's one more hack from a shook up and shaken Kodiak. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.